So we're here today with Michael O'Neill who has flown all the way from down under to meet with us at the Good Food Project in Scotland. Thank you Michael. It's a pleasure Steve, I'm delighted to be here. What do you think of the Scottish weather so far? Well you know, everything is beautiful in Scotland, I would not like to have your weather. It is, yeah, it's, it's been very cold. So tell us how you met Barbara then, because I've heard a few different stories, so tell us how you, you two managed to get together. Yes, well. I was single for a number of years. I had two small children and I was working at a health retreat. I was the business manager of the place. And I decided that I'd like to find a wife, a partner for life, someone that would be there, that would cover my back, that I didn't want to have another marriage breakdown. I wanted something that had longevity and happiness in it. So I developed a formula which mm -hmm. I felt would find me the perfect wife. Yep. And I gave 12 months, so any female I met between the age of 18 and 45, and I was 39 at the time, I would put their name into my formula, as long as they were single, and then I'd give them a full assessment. And they didn't know they were... Oh no, no one knew, no. My two children knew I were doing it, they were sworn to secrecy, and my best friend who was the owner of the health retreat I was working at, Gary Martin, Gary, he knew about it, and he was sworn to secrecy. So I'm just writing names in there. I would go to church, I would go to functions, I would, there was clients at the health retreat that I would get to know and it was all based on certain criteria that I felt was important for my life and everything was based on a points value and uh, so I, I did this for, for one year mm -hmm. because I thought I'm going to be thorough about it. I didn't date anybody, I just wanted to do this. After one year there was one person that had consistently scored higher than everyone else. Her name was Barbara. Yeah. Barbara was three years older than me, which at the time I felt was a little bit of a negative. I thought, oh dear me, I've never had anyone older than me. I, G I, guys do think that though, don't they? It's, it's oh, kind well, of like yeah. a, it's traditionally the, the, the guys older than the women. The yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 sort of it just was the way I way I thought. Yeah. And as you said, so I thought mm, that's a bit of a negative. She had six children. I felt that was a negative. But even with those negatives. She still was the highest point scorer. What was it? What shot her up the ranks? And what scores was she getting? Well, I was. I, I looked at everything. I thought, what is very important to me in my life? What are things that I would think are non-negotiable? And what are things that I could not live with? Just things that I think that would be so negative, they couldn't live with. So things were interest in health. I was already a manager of a health retreat. I was passionately concerned about health. My faith was very important to me. I wanted someone that shared that value. Like mm -hmm. I didn't feel it was the ingredients for happiness that if I was a Christian and someone was an atheist, that we would have, we had grounds for contention later on. The way we, I brought up my children, I already had two children, I had certain you, values. You were home educating the kids, I was, right? I was Just a homeschooling yeah, father. Yeah. So I held a job and I homeschooled my children. Tough. Yeah, but I'm focused. And yeah. that was my job, so I thought this is what I have to do. And so I gave Gave both of them the best I could. And uh, there was Barbara. She was also a homeschooling mother with six children. Six kids. Um, we shared so much common ground. And how old were you then and how old was Barbara then? I was 39 and she was 42, 43. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people might think it's unusual, but Barbara really liked the approach and the, the gestical way you went about it, I think. Well, she, she did. And, and I think this was part of the value. After the 12 months, I said to my daughter one morning, I said, I'm going over to ask Barbara to marry me. And she said, Dad, now my daughter was 10 years old. She said, Dad, you can't do that. You, you don't do that to a girl. And I said, well, why not? I've worked everything out and I have it all clearly here. And she said, Dad, you should take her out. Now, this was a Thursday. She told me this and I said, oh, really? She said, Dad, you should, should take her out somewhere. It'd be nice. And I said, okay, I will. So I called up Barbara, and I often called up Barbara, I'd ring her up and I'd say, oh Barbara, she was also doing casual work at the health retreat, could you start work? So, I'm sorry. And so that was not unnormal for me to call her. I said, yeah. uh, Barbara, just wondering if you'd like to go out tonight. She said, oh, um, um, yes, that'd be nice, thank you. I said, okay. And then I picked her up, we went out, we went out to a beautiful restaurant, we had dinner, we talked about work, we talked about the children. There was no road, nothing. and then I said, okay, we'll, we'll go home. And she told me later on, she thought, well, what was that all about? <laughs> so then on the Sunday, I said to my daughter, I said, you know what, I, I have to go and ask her now. And so I went over and I said to Barbara, I'd like to have a chat to you about something, if you don't mind sending the children outside. It's a serious chat. And she said, yeah, sure. Set her children outside. 
And so I said to her, look, Barbara, I've been thinking about things and I think you and I should get married. Right. And she said, really? And I said, well, I'm going to tell you why. So I went through, I said, you know, we share so many values. You're a good woman. We're roughly around the same age era. You're a good cook. You keep a clean house. Your children are in order. You don't seem to waste a lot of money. You're not at the shops all the time. She was just nodding. If you know Barbara, she's just quiet and she's just, yes, yes. And I said, so? She said, well, I think if two people get married, they should love each other. Do you love me? And I said, well, because I was quite unprepared for that. <laughs> and she, and she, she just was looking at me and I said, well, I'll say this. I love your character. Mm -hmm. I have an attraction to you. I think that we have the ingredients. I've never let my thoughts go beyond this. But I do think we have a platform to have a good marriage and I believe that we will fall in love. Right. I said, you can think about it for us. She said, no, I will marry you. And the Barbara O'Neill then isn't the the viral Barbara O'Neill now. She wasn't. Oh, she no. Wasn't doing, I mean, no. this, this was a... This no. was, when was this? What, what, Barbara was, this was in 1997. Barbara was a single mother living in, we would call it poverty by our Western standards, just struggling to raise her children. Mm -hmm. In a rental property, she had sold her home previous and uh, she'd helped her children and we were married two and a half weeks later. Brilliant. I said, well, if you've made the decision, let's just do it. We won't muck around. And so we were married. Great. And the kids gelled together? The kids well. gelled together. It's tough that though, isn't it? Six kids well, and two kids, is that right? Yeah, so we ended up with eight children and we, we said, I said things to Barbara, these are my children, these are your children. I understand you have the dominant say there, I'll have the dominant say there, but I think we are pretty much on the same page and that's why I feel this marriage will be good because we're not going to have severe conflicts on the way we view how, for their, how their school, how they work, how, mm -hmm. how they, they relate to, um, uh, you know, in communication with us as parents. Yeah. And it worked out to be a very good marriage. Yeah, brilliant. We've been married 27 years now, and I'm very close to all the children. Barbara's close to my children. We have a very close bond. I started to read books like Keys to Successful Step Parenting, and when I'd read through, I thought they'd give all the problems with them. Well, that's not our problem, and that's not our problem. So they would. Yeah. Uh, and There's a lot of knowledge to be gained from books, isn't there? You know, if, mm. if you're that way inclined. As opposed to breaking your teeth on things and well, taking that's right. a lot longer to learn. You know, someone's been there before, it's shoulders of giants, isn't it? You know, there's a saying that a fool learns by his own mistakes, mm. but a wise person learns by the mistakes of others. So why walk down and trample the road of, of failure when you can? see from other successes and make something a success you save yourself and that goes in business it goes in family yeah whatever in this amazing business i'm sure you've read many yeah i, I was very influenced as a, a as a young guy you know when mm. i started my career on books mm. that people had sure. written that i thought they know something i don't and yes. it's absolutely inspirational yes. mm. I'm, a, I'm a great reader mm -hmm. i love reading and i love reading hard copies I, i'm not a yeah. I'm not an audio book Booker or a digital booker, I'm a hard copy. I think there's so much digital pollution that people are getting mm. now to, to sit down and take a break away and have a cup of tea and you know sit and curl up with yeah. a bit. It's yeah. not a bad place to That's be right. these days. That's right. And Barbara's always quoting books as well. She's she's learned a lot from lots of other people. I mean, a lot of her teachings are old school, aren't they? It's sort of she's a prolific <clears throat> prolific reader. When we were first married and, and uh, she would want things, she would say, um, I want such and such a book, and she'd tell me, and I'd think, okay. So I'd look it up and I'd think, that's $500. Unbelievable. She said, some women want pearls, some women want diamonds, I just want that book, and it'd be some medical book. Mm -hmm. And then we'd order it for her, you know, I'd think, okay, we'll get you that book. And I'd look at it and i think, how can you read this? Yeah. I think I would want to poke my eyes out after one page it's so you know it's so all, she devoured them but she just devoured them and then she would she would read things she said this is amazing it's a study on this and this and this so she would actually memorize it mm -hmm. and she says I need, I need to have this in my mind and so I witnessed this for years and years she just she was reading she's a great reader of the, of the Bible which she memorized she huge portions it, yeah. of it but medical books uh, and I had an incident where Barbara was invited to take a meeting in a city of Albury in Australia. And when she was there, there were some medical people, a doctor and others there, at least they were hostile. 
And so they started interjecting in the meeting and they'd say, you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. They were quoting this, all this scientific stuff. And, and I'm at the back and I thought, oh dear, looks like they've um, cornered and corralled my poor little wife, mm -hmm. you know, here, there. Uh, and, and, but I'd look at her and she was just the sea of calm up on the stage. And she said, no, no, I'm very familiar with that study. But this, that was long debunked by science. And then she just gave the history of it. Then she said, but on mm -hmm. this other <coughs> study has shown how that was incorrect. They came and, and this, but, 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 and she quote, three times they interjected angrily and solidly. Three times she calmly just, just broke it down. She knew exactly what they were talking about. I thought they'd won, you know, because, you know, if you don't know the other side, yeah, yeah. You, you hear a, you hear an argument from someone with you know a badge like a doctor, and you think, well, boy. But in the end, the whole crowd just erupted and cheered her, and then started to hoot the people. Be quiet! We didn't come here to hear you. And it's a it's a confidence in our knowledge and our style that has made her really popular. Well, she's good with the crowd. I mean, she's very believable, isn't she? Well, knowledge is power, and she has the knowledge. I believe that Barbara has the ability to take all that knowledge and take the complex and break it down into a layman's simplicity. Yeah. Make it reachable to you. And people are like, yes, I can do that. Oh, that's why that happened to yeah. me. And then even the whiteboard as well, it, it's old school, but it still works because people, yeah. when they hear something, it goes in. But see, when they hear and read it yes. and see it at the same time, they get it in stereo, it goes in twice. Many people have tried to tell Barbara, you know, friends and well-meaning, they say, you look, Barbara, you, you should get PowerPoint. And she says to me, do you, what do you think? I said, no, 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 you. And she said, I, I don't want to be locked in. And I can just write up. And she said, I generally have a framework on a topic that I'm going to write up, but um, sometimes it's a, you know, I can add something. I can, But just to be locked to this one PowerPoint, I said, well, I'm glad because... PowerPoints generally drive me nuts. And there's a long gap between when you guys met, got married, got the kids together, and the rise to fame. We could talk about the mm. what went on in between. There's a lot covered in your book in terms mm. of the backstory there, which is really interesting. It's a it's a very hard hitting book, Michael. It's quite I, emotional at, at points here when you're reading yeah. it. Like it, it can it can grab you. You know, I love Barbara, and. Of course, I see myself as her defender, mm -hmm. and her well, she calls you that a mighty defender or something. Uh, I've heard her say that yeah, a few times. Yeah, she's a good woman, and and look, I feel I I feel a great responsibility to to look after. I feel that God has given me that job to to mm -hmm. to look after her. I have to tell you a little. I, I don't know if I've ever said this on camera before, but um, I remember one one particular morning I was I don't know I just felt a little bit of a loss of where to head in in our life. What I was managing a, a health retreat, well I actually owned our own health retreat, and I thought where do we go now? I knew that Barbara was taking lectures and people were liking, but it was very, very small numbers and so forth, and so I I actually this morning felt ahead, I started to pray, I thought what, where do I go in my life now? What? I need some direction Lord, and it was like I had some inspirational moment, and it was like you have to make Barbara famous. I came into her and I said, you know, I feel like I've just been, had a, an epiphany moment that I have to make you famous. She said, oh, that's that's a funny thing. <laughs> and she, she thought, that, whoa. And I said, well, look, I, I actually believe that your grasp of health and how you present it is so unique because generally health speakers bore me to tears. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I can listen to yours over again and I always learn something. And so I feel that I'm, I'm going to make you famous. And I thought, how do I do this? So it was then we decided I hired a guy to film Barbara and then we made a decision with him because I didn't know how to do it. Put them all up for free. Just get this message out there to people on the internet. Mm -hmm. And when was that? What, what year would that have been? That probably would have been about in the year 2000 and maybe 2012 or 13, mm -hmm. somewhere about then. And yeah, so Barbara, and we just kept putting them up. And so we'd go to places, yeah, just put them up, put them up. Put, we just started putting them up. And were the lectures getting bigger, audiences getting bigger at the time? Well, we, then one day this guy, his name was Henry, Henry Ponko. And, he, and then he would be contacting me. One million views. 
and he started telling me all these figures which were and it was on YouTube then, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. He said, I said, is it? He said, this is amazing. I have done many things. I've never seen anything like this. Saw. So it wasn't, it was just solid. It, and it was solid for years. And then probably about 12 months ago, mm -hmm. a very good friend of ours, he's the director of Living Springs Retreat in, in Alabama, USA. Jeffrey decided to start putting them up with graphics on TikTok because we were being heavily censored mm -hmm. by now. Facebook, YouTube, they were down, down, down. You know what they're like. Yeah, absolutely. The pharmaceuticals bark and they run run to do their, do their bidding. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But TikTok was relatively uncensored. Mm -hmm. and Still is, yeah. Yeah, so it just took off. So that probably happened 12 months ago. Unbelievable. And then from then on, it was just like, what happened? Okay, so you've got plenty of events, you've got the Misty Mountain Retreat. So Barbara's functioning at this time in Australia, she's able to do anything she wants, she can get her yeah. health messages out there, and then HCCC came along. That's right. and, and you've covered this in your book, which, That's is, right. which you, you felt you had, had to write, but do you want to go into that in a bit yeah, of sure. detail? So, I have, it's called the Healthcare Complaints Commission. It's a government body, so it's the Healthcare Complaints Commission of New of New South Wales. There's another organisation called the Australian Skeptics. The Australian Skeptics despise all things natural, particularly. They say they're, they're skeptics, they're skeptic of everything except themselves and their mm -hmm. opinions. But they have an offshoot organisation called the Friends of Science in Medicine. Mm -hmm. The Friends of Science in Medicine are... So they're sceptical to everything natural? Problem. Friends of Science. It's made up of university professors and all these sort of people that are are clearly in the mainstream of very pro-pharmaceutical medicine. They love the the old the mainstream, which is medicate, radiate, and operate. Yeah, they love that, and they actively fight and besmirch anyone. And, and they get and the media love them. Mm -hmm. If they say something, the media will go and follow them because the media is also in the pockets of these pharmaceuticals. People don't realise this, but. At some time, and particularly in the USA, m medical advertising can com make up to 70% of the advertising budgets of, so of some of these small yeah, television huge. stations. Yeah, it's huge. They, if they pull their advertising, they're finished. The they don't know how to live without it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which makes them in the pockets completely. They're completely in the pockets. So they mounted a campaign amongst their members. We saw all of it. We knew it was coming because we have people that monitor their own internal website, you know, and they called on their members to lodge, start lodging complaints to the HCCC, mm -hmm. the Healthcare Complaints Commission. So these people have never met Barbara, never been treated by Barbara. What was the catalyst then? Like, what, why then? Why did they rise up then and join forces against Barbara? What? Yeah, well, it, I had started a political party. It was called the Informed Medical Options Party. And what year was that, Michael? Uh, this was in 2016. So pre-COVID? Pre Pre-COVID. And we were, we were fighting against the, the huge push of the government to enforce vaccination of all children in Australia, regardless of their condition, their choice, anything. They were trying to make it mandatory. They were making it, they were virtually making it mandatory by default amongst poor people. Under penalty of what? That you would lose your benefits. Then you have to go into our Australian tax system is because once upon a time in Australia, you could claim your children and your wife as a legitimate tax. Mm. Then they said, what we'll do, you don't claim that, but we will give you the money back depending on how many children and what your income budget is. So they said, you won't get that. So it's your rightful tax money and the government said, if you don't do it, you don't do that. Your child couldn't go into daycare. Mm -hmm. And there was, so it was called no jab, no pay. There was a government policy called no jab, no pay. Can you believe mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I can't. I've got two kids, you know, you, you yeah. met them today, uh, nine and four, yeah. un, un, unjabbed from birth. And there was a lot of pressure here, but not that kind of pressure. So an average poor person, well, we're poor or middle, like a trade person or someone mm -hmm. that just has a job, they take out a mortgage, they are counting on their, what they call their, their family benefit payment, mm -hmm. which comes every two weeks. They need, and it. they need it to pay their mortgage and live because they're maxed, they're working hard, they're building a future for their children and their own life, and all of a sudden the government says, you're not getting that. They're screwed. Mm -hmm. They're screwed. And it, it, it was so bad it was actually against our constitution because 
Is, so, was that your angle then for the part that you felt that was, was the angle constitutionally? Of the it was constitutionally wrong. In our, we have a section 5123A which says that we'd, as far as pharmaceuticals there was to be no civil conscription, <clears> no <throat> force. It's in our constitution. Yeah, and that's a financial force. It's as bad as everything that's happened in in communist and fascist regimes of the past. They yeah. were using the same tactics on their citizens. Had you seen anything like that before in Australia? Never seen like anything. It's a very free country. So it's, you know, Australia has seemed, been seemed to be the land free. of the free. You know, come to Australia. We're, she'll be right, mate. Have a beer and, you know, stuff the government. That's sort of been our attitude. But mm. all of a sudden now we were all fearful. The government was the all caring and all loving for us and they, they, the, everything they do is in our best interest which was just an absurdity. Mm -hmm. they, we have politicians that have no idea about health being pressured by their party and the media with this continual barrage that vaccinations will keep your child safe. Mm -hmm. Completely ignored the thousands and thousands of people all over Australia who were saying, my child's just had terrible injury. Ignoring the fact that autism had gone from 1 in 10,000 to now 1 in 58 in Australia at that time. Unbelievable. So we have, we have this, uh, and I thought not one political party was addressing it. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I will start a political party. I will make this my object. So I started the Informed Medical Options Party. Mm -hmm. And we went to work to expose And Barbara us. agreed she was happy with you to do she Barbara was, was happy to, with me to do that. But she became collateral damage. So the timing of the complaints to the HCCC was, was around about the same time as Yeah, the, well, what happened, Barbara was invited to speak at a group that was considered by the authorities as being an anti-vax group. We can be anti-anything. You can be, be anti-bullying, uh, you can be anti, um, you know, whatever. But now to be anti-vax is to be some sort of person that you, you don't have a place in our society. It would be equivalent in the 1930s to say all of a sudden your next door neighbour is like, they're Jewish. Mm -hmm. they, they have forfeited all rights to your sympathy, mm -hmm. to any mm -hmm. of the privileges that are afforded any other citizen. In fact, we will seize, we will take from you. Mm -hmm. This was what was happening. Mm -hmm. This was the pre, the same principles are happening. And so, so I started protesting. I started we, we, And you'd never protested before? I had never been a great protester. I had been probably maybe two in my life for very important things, but mm -hmm. I thought. But in those days, people heckled us, they jeered us, we'd have just a few numbers on the street, and we would be saying, we, We're doing this for and you. And this is just specifically about the kids trying to mandate it. So that's so pre, pre COVID, mm -hmm. nothing to do with COVID then. Yeah, it wasn't. There was no COVID. But anyway, they, they reported, they got three people in the Friends of Science and Medicine to lodge complaints. Mm -hmm. One was that Barbara was recommending goat's milk for mothers that couldn't breastfeed. Which they, is common. Absolutely common. It's probably in some countries just the most common alternative to breast milk. I'll tell you how silly it got, Steve. Yeah. They said to me it's potentially fatal. So I asked them, I said, oh, really? Oh, we were not aware of that. Could we have the documentation on that allegation that's potentially fatal. And they said to me, well, while there's never been a fatality, a recorded fatality, it is potentially fatal. I thought, we're not dealing with science here at all. Yeah. We're dealing with an ideology. Mm -hmm. And then it made me realize that the HCCC was not about a truly healthcare complaints. It was, about, it was an ideology enforcer. Mm -hmm. And Barbara's ideology was different from theirs. And theirs had now just grown that there is only one way to health and healing. It's, it's what we, the government, will determine is right for you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow. And so I used to speak. I used to stand up and tell people, you think it's the children. You laugh and mock. It's only a matter of time and they'll come for you. Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time. Because once they win this, then they will look for you. And of course, then came COVID. Yeah. And that... Exactly. And what what happened, happened in Australia was off the scale. I mean, it was bad everywhere, but Australia just changed. It, it was one of the worst countries in the world. It was. It had the longest lockdown in the entire world. The police became brutal enforcers of an ideology. Yeah, some of the videos were 
Soul destroying to watch. I, I was, and police left the police force en masse. They formed association of police that were standing up and they, they just said, we never joined the police force for this. They didn't want to be harassing their fellow citizens mm -hmm. and beating them and arresting them for nothing because they made a medical choice. They didn't want the vaccine. I mean, people can be pro-vaccine, people can decide not to do that. Mm. It's up to the individual. Yes. When, when did that ever become Pfizer's choice or the government's choice to, to say, you will do this, mm. whether you like it or not, you lose your job? Yeah. It got to an insane level. I was in despair. I just couldn't believe that this had happened to Australia. I, I thought, we, we've lost. Where yeah. do we end up? And of course... <clears throat> You know, I personally was arrested, I was accosted by police so many times for the simple crime of not wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. And I remember once I said to them, but you have your mask on, so what do you... They said, well, uh, uh, your mask protects me, but my mask protects you. So you're putting me down, but I said, but your is your mask faulty? <laughs> no, I, I'm trying to use the logic, of it, but they would they disconnect. No, no, no. Your mask is a th you're not wearing a mask is a threat to me. But I said, but you had the mask on. Yeah. So what what are you worried about? Doesn't it work? How they made the police turn into that, and how they made family members turn against other family members, neighbour against neighbour, around those subjects was unbelievable to watch. It was. And it happened everywhere. I'm a great reader of history. And used to be fascinated that how did the German population embrace a, an ideology which we now look at with abhorrence, mm -hmm. um, which was the, the National Socialism of Germany, but how did, how did they all come up to it? How did the police turn into this and how did, and then we saw it. I thought, I don't wonder anymore, I know it will happen to any extent that the leaders want to take us when the People. Unless more people see that. I had exactly the same experience. I used to go on holiday and I'd be sitting there as a young guy, maybe 18, 19. Mm. You see the German guys and they were the best behaved and they were big, strapping, handsome, good looking guys. Yes. They came out with their towels. There's always that joke about the Germans getting up early and putting their towels out to get their sun ranges. And they did. Yeah. I looked at them and I thought, they don't drink as much as us. Their, behave, their manners are great, their mm. behaviour is great. How did they get a nation of people like that to, mm. to turn against an innocent sector of society in that way? And then I saw it too this time around. I saw how the, the propaganda machine could move. Yes. And the fear mm. and the repetitiveness mm. of the, the leaders out there making these claims. Mm. And, you know, the pretty much 24 hour coverage. Michael, yeah, you, you, you drum it in, it's a, mm. it's a form of hypnotism, yes. it's all of those things, and, it, and it's propaganda. These guys are masters of mm. propaganda. To watch it unfold, and to a certain extent, it, it could come back again. I have no doubt it will come back. Yeah. I don't have a, a single doubt in my mind that we're going to see something. I've got some troubles ahead, haven't we? We, we do have troubles. There could be, you know, they're, they're over there at Davros talking about, yeah, about you, when the next pandemic you get is. You've the pandemic treaty about to be signed. It's, you, you, the yeah. countries are signing it, Michael. They're yeah. all there. They're going to hand over that power. You get these guys that are backed by these mm. pharmaceutical companies. Now, the beauty of a message like Barbara's is that it's liberating people from the from the, the dependent thinking on pharmaceuticals because if we understand how the body works, we don't have to be a medical scientist, but basically we have this body, we live in it, we've been in it. Nobody understands it better than you do yourself. You know your own aches That's and right. you know what can improve it. Learn about it. Come and buy these. I'm just astounded. These amazing products you've got yeah, here. They're, good, they're, good, they're fantastic. Good, they are good products. Yeah. Even yeah. things like the, you know, the herbal teas and the effects that they can have. And, you know, just, know. just stop and eating the absolute nonsense. I mean, people are addicted to it as well. That's it's hard. Why did the supermarkets around the world not buy this organic? It's already, it's already there. It's been made. Just work with these cash. They wanted to make it themselves mm. and put their stamp on it because they want to own mm. you, you can't go anywhere and eat without them if you want organic it's their organic mm. and it's entry level organic it's yeah. organic with a small o mm. and we encourage people to support your local growers your farmers, the smallest the farmers bakers. whatever get your food from its source get it from reliable sources and i notice on your website it says let food be your medicine it's so basic it was 
it was the cornerstone of the Hippocrates oath yeah. that all doctors take, which they then go into university and are taught Completely to ignore it. it. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It's, it, it's unbelievable. And we've been captured, the general population, and, and looking at, at human beings, the majority of people actually, it's just the way they are. They actually like to be told. The, there's yeah. an element of that, and, that's and right. hopefully some of that's changing. People are waking up to to mm. what's happening, and their eyes have been opened a bit mm. to a certain extent. So the complaints got raised. The yeah. ACC approached you guys, and they said, "We want to meet with you." Is that uh, right? that's right? Well, very br- first of all, we had to put in the answer about the goats. But we thought it was a joke. We thought, <laughs> "How silly!" We'll just we probably sent them one page. We realised that we possibly made a mistake then, although they were out to get us anyway, but they could have been, they could have been far more comprehensive. I thought, in any fair, rational, equal world, that would be thrown out as frivolous. A complaint, and... That, You've answered the complaint? Yeah, that's a big deal. More complaints came in, and then it went to a tribunal. We ended up in this tribunal. There were four people in the tribunal. Not one of them was a medical person. There was two lawyers and two investigators. So... These were the people that were going to decide on the the veracity of what Barbara was saying. They were playing on big screens her talks, and it was a stitch up. It was a it was just a joke. It was unfair. Didn't obey the rule of law. So they were showing particular videos that were going viral on the internet. Yes, and there was one there. They said you said about vaccination is no good. So, but when they had it up, Barbara was saying you need to investigate before you vaccinate. What year was this then? This was still... So we're in the hearing in 2019, just before COVID. Yeah. In fact, I could look up the... I think it'll be on page 33 of this book, and it'll have the date, and I'll give it the exact date. Yeah, yeah. 27th of June, 19, 2019. Mm-hmm. And was that the... So when did they make the decision, and what was well, the punishment? If you we like, went through the... everything. We were there for about three hours. Tell you this, when we walked out, Barbara said, I've got to go to the bathroom. We hired a lawyer for the day. They wanted $5,000 for the day. They sat in there and virtually just listened. Mm-hmm. I turned to the lawyer as we were walking out. She was a lady right beside me. I said, well, how did that go? She said, well, I was so surprised. They had nothing on her. She says, I was waiting for them to deliver the big kabam moment where we caught you red hand. She said, they never had it. She said, really, there's nothing there, nothing. They had nothing at all. I said, fantastic. So they're going to throw it out. She said, oh, no, they're going to give her a permanent prohibition order. I said, what? Yeah, they're going to give her a a permanent prohibition order. I said, but that's not fair. She said, Michael, that's about as good as you'll get out of this place. She said, she's not going to court. She's not going to be charged because there's nothing to charge her with. So they've just put a permanent prohibition order on her. Meaning what? That she's prohibited from giving health advice forever in Australia. Mm -hmm. And up to that point, Barbara could be the main... Expert, was, if you like. She uh, was our uh, Misty Mountain. She was the health director of Misty Mountain. She lectured there. And that was your main source of income, was it? That was our income. And all, all Australia then, travelling around Australia, not, she was so, not so much global, no, apart no, from the, your friends in America? Yeah, we did a few trips a year, but mostly it was just in Australia. So we would work two weeks at the retreat. The retreat would finish on Sunday. Barbara would be on a plane or a car to somewhere in Australia that she'd do it all week up until Saturday, then she'd fly home and start again Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was constant, and I often travelled with her. And she was popular in Australia. We'd go to packed houses all yeah. the time, but largely not so much overseas. So when they delivered this, we just thought, well, there we go. Like Our business is basically runs people come up there because Barbara had now developed a reputation of being someone that was helping people. Mm-hmm. I might add... So you have a look at the health care complaints. It's health care complaints. So we never, they never had one single complaint, mm-hmm. not one against Barbara by anybody that ever went to the retreat or had a consultation or in any way was treated for Barbara. We actually presented them a petition with 55,000 people that said that they support her. We also presented them stacks of testimonials of people that had been cured mm-hmm. and helped by following her advice, they couldn't care less. Unless it's a sort of peer group paper or it's a study that's got 5,000, 10,000 people which the pharmaceutical companies can afford to do and they've got the time yeah. to do it to make these studies available. Mm. Barbara doesn't have that. No, she didn't. She just had the common people on her side. They couldn't mm. care less. 
They couldn't care less about those people's health needs. Like, I'm getting into policy. I'm very interested in the finance of Australia. I was friends with the finance minister at the time, and he told me, he said, what Barbara teaches, if we could get that into every school and teach people across Australia, it would help our health budgets. He said, our health budget is a black hole. We cannot put enough money mm -hmm. into health. The more we put in, it just sucks it up. And he said, but this could do it. Well, what happens? They come and try and stop it. These are the people that are responsible for the spending of our tax dollar, and they're stopping the very message that could save the taxpayer a huge amount of money, get people live ha better and happier. Mm -hmm. it, if you could, and people don't get it. And when you talk about, oh, well, it's all it's pharmaceutical dominated, they think, oh, conspiracy. A conspiracy. It's not conspiracy. And I might add that this finance minister talking to him, he said to me, Michael, because I said to him, well, you see it now, because he'd just retired. I said, why didn't you do it when you were in, in politics? He said, Michael, you have no idea of the pressure that we're under. He said, we're dealing with pharmaceutical lobbyists constantly, and usually they'll send very attractive young ladies with beautiful folders, and they give them to us, and they smile. We get gifts, we get this and that, and we're told that this is the latest science, this product is an amazing. He said, I don't doubt them. And fr so from there, Barbara then, and you, you guys decided, okay, well, let's, you know, we've been sailors locally. Yes. You know, they've tried to assassinate a character, which is where your book comes in. So how soon after that did you want to write the book? Uh, qu quite soon after, because people were calling me, the newspaper, the Australian Murdoch Press and all states was going berserk and calling her a exposed a health sh scammer, a quack, they were calling her. Yeah. And do you think that was a sort of concerted effort oh, yes, know, to definitely. follow up on the, the yes. decision? You know, let's, let's keep sticking That's the right. button. It was, it was well orchestrated. How did you feel when that was being written? I felt... How did Barbara feel as well? Oh, well, <coughs> I used to tell Barbara, don't read anything. She said, oh, I won't read anything. And people were telling her, and I said, don't was worry it on the TV as well? I don't think it was on TV. Yeah. Hmm. It was mainly in the written and on the online press. Then I decided, look, I'm sick of answering all these questions because I seem to be spending a lot of time on the phone. So I thought, I'll put it all in a book. I'll just write the whole thing out, did it? So it took me about six weeks to put that book together. Yeah. From conception to print. And it's popular. It's your first, first ever book? Yes, first book I've ever written. I'm just looking at it here, but that's it there. And I thought... But the, I gave a story of Barbara's life, where she came from. It's it's very, very honest and very hard to mm. think. There's things in that book that you wouldn't find on the internet, for sure. Yeah, that's right. It basically, it says, Barbara's a real person. She's had a hard life. She <clears throat> did not have a, an easy life, but she's a woman of great faith. She's very calm. She's always busy in doing something. Mm -hmm. And she's very conscious that time is important, so she... If she's travelling, oh, I'm going to read this, I'm going to read that. She has all these goals set out for in a day. Very, very methodical person. And her book's incredibly popular. I mean, I, I, when I reached out mm -hmm. to you and Michael, it, it was about a website, a page on, it, on the internet was, which was representing itself as Barbara. Mm -hmm. It was called Dr. Barbara Neal. Mm -hmm. The profile photograph was Barbara. Mm -hmm. They were making out they were Barbara Neal. And we had a lot of Barbara Neal. So before we had any relationship with you, I looked at this page and I thought, something's not right here. I did a bit of research and I wanted to... So I reached out and I found Misty Mountain and it was quite, wasn't straightforward mm. because it's not all there readily available. So I reached out to the girl there. In Australia? Yeah. Robin? Robin. Mm. Robin's a delightful... She's really, really nice. I only communicated... But actually, I spoke to her on the phone. I found the number, I phoned in. I said, look, we've got thousands and thousands of people here and I want to point them at Barbara's page. Mm. I don't think this is Barbara's page. It doesn't talk sound like mm. Barbara. Mm -hmm. She said it's not Barbara. Mm. Definitely Barbara doesn't do social media and that's definitely not yeah. her page. I said we'd we quite like to buy some, some books. She said we need to speak to Michael on that. Mm. So she gave me your email address and I, I emailed you. And I, I thought, first I thought we'll get a hundred books. And I posted about it. I said we're going to buy a hundred books. And everybody was like I want one, I want one, I want mm. one. And my sister, who's on the page, she phoned me up and she said, you're going to need more than 100 books. I'm usually quite good at guessing demand. Mm. <laughs> but for some reason, I'm thinking 100 books. She said, you're going to need more. I said, OK, we'll go for 200 books. 
and the, we, we, we bought two new books. You sent us them, they arrived within six days. They sold out within 12 hours mm. on, on the website straight away. And then I think we came back for a thousand books and then now we're... 5,000. 5, they're going really fast. And there's, there's more because people people want the physical book in their mm. hand. They want to say that they've got it. Mm. They want to read the advice. That book is different from the videos. self healed by the design is different. It's a tremendous angle she's coming at it from. Your body mm. can heal itself if you give it the right conditions, but okay. people don't understand what those conditions yeah, are. That's right. And that's, that's our job. We were accused in the, by holding out a cure. We said to them, we don't claim to cure anything. It's only the body's the healer. We kept trying to tell them, only the body heals. We, we, we don't claim to be healer. We're just teachers. We're just teaching people. I remember I asked them one day, I said, what, what part do you find is so bad? Is it the drinking more water? Is it having more sleep? Yeah. Is it having a good diet? They, you know, they just couldn't answer. That's the that. danger. Where yeah, where, well, where is the <clears> danger for that? So it came down to it was an ideology problem they had with her. There was no one, not one person they could point to that had been hurt. Not one. Yeah. There was no evidence of her trying to sell products. It was all pointing to the body. It was just a fiasco, the whole yeah. stitch up. But look, I wrote the book. I wrote the books just one to save me time and to get the true story out. So if anyone wanted to know, I'd say there's the there, there's the book. We actually sent that to the HCCC. Yeah. Because I thought, you know, if they see anything wrong, let, let them come and try and sue me about it. But of course they won't. Yeah. One of the first things I said to you is I said, it's a great name for a book because it hooks you in. And I remember a, a video interview that Barbara did and she, she must have been, t she was talking about you t telling her about the title f of the book for the first time. You, you said, uh, I'm going to call it The Assassination of Barbara and she said, well, it's a bit strong, is it not? And you said, no, it's good, it's good. Yeah. And I think that's what I said I said to you when I first contacted you, said, that's, that's a great title for a book. Yeah, well, it's, it's the assassination of mm -hmm. Barbara O'Neill as a person, not her physical life, but it was the assassination of her credibility and everything that they think. But the, the reality is it backfired. Yeah. Completely backfired on them because we sat back and I said one day to Barbara, I said, Okay, love, I've thought about all this. You have three options, and I'm going to give them to you. Number one is you can retire. You can retire today. We can afford that you retire. You can just visit grandchildren, do the gardening. She was just nodding. I said, number two is we can go to court. I've been to the lawyers. They want half a million dollars up front and probably another half a million in six months, and then there'll be ongoing costs. We could probably afford the first half a million, and after that we'll just have to fundraise Number three is you can go and work outside of Australia, go overseas. And she and, and I hardly, she says, number three. I said, she said, number three. She said, I'm not ready to retire. I never want to go back into one of those. They were rude, smug, besmirching. As, she doesn't deserve it. Because they knew that it didn't matter what was happening. They were just going to know. So I said, okay, if you're happy with that, then I will make that happen for you, love. Yeah, so they try to turn people against their, you know, assassinate her character, silence her, let her voice grow louder. Globally. It did. So, assassinated, but she rose from the dead. Yeah. Her character has, has, has risen up and shone. Yeah. I have no doubt that in small rooms, maybe even big rooms, there'll be people, you know, bringing their hands and love to somehow stop her. But I do believe that her message is the truth. And I believe that God is on her side. Mm -hmm. And while they may have an apparent victory, ultimately they will not succeed. They've got the power, they've got the people, they've got the manpower. They can tell me knock on your door for anything. For anything. And I've had them knock on my door. I've, I've, everything you can think has happened. And it's probably not going to end. I mean, they're going to keep coming. I, I, I have no doubt. Australia is very, very on track. To, it has a clear socialist agenda mm -hmm. and not just about social, uh, socially financial equality, but it's really all the bad tenets of the totalitarian society that went with it, as you've seen in Eastern Europe and, mm -hmm. and the old you know, USSR days. And in a, in a country, like, she'll be right, mate. You know, we're at the beach, we're having a beer, you know, what are we, yeah, 
governments, you know, I always grew up that the government's crook. People will say, oh, yes, you can't trust the government, yet they will believe all that they say. Yeah. There, there's this contradiction. There's a disconnect. Yeah. Because we can all be so very wise in hindsight. We can look back at all these other cultures, oh, yes, oh, yes, and imagine that maybe we would have been someone that stood up for our persecuted neighbour. We wouldn't have, you know, we would have. Mm -hmm. uh, they know they won't. And then we're optimistic for being pillars in the future, but we cannot see it when it's happening around us. It's as if right in the moment, when your moment comes, when it's happening to you, you are now the victims of a massive propaganda mm -hmm. that you're all of a sudden... It's the acceptance of it, you know, it's like the, the shoulder shrugging masses, you know, the wider sweet masses, you know. Yeah. What can you do? It's the government. Yeah. Well, we have to do you can't it's, it, these are stop the bus moments when you get involved Absolutely. and fleeced as a country and abused mm. by a government yeah, yeah this is a stop the bus moment we have to do something it's, yes. your, it's your duty to do something yes. and they're not even going to kill us to do it they're not even going to what's the worst they're going to do i often think of this what is the worst yeah. they're going to do yeah you get a, a, a license to to stand up to mm. in reality you know mm. they can't really do much uh, so, with regards to the the overseas events, we we're fortunate enough to be having Barbara come to do a, yes. a little event in Scotland for four days. We've got the dates. We're I'm just going to look them up now so we don't get any confusion here. And This is back to this taking the message out. You know, people, Australia's loss is the world's gain. And Absolutely. The message is louder and she's, she's getting to travel to some great places and more people are getting yep. the message. She's more popular now than she's ever been in spite of them trying to cancel her. September the 10th, I think was the day we could we can mark for it. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. And we're going to get Barbara looked after. Our biggest challenge is how we deal with the demand for it. Mm. And Barbara said to me, oh, I, I think we should be going to the UK. But here we are, okay. Steve, a spot has become available on the 10th of September and when I told Barbara she said oh, yeah. I'm so excited she said where's it going to be and I said Scotland and she was very very pleased about it she was a Scottish dancer as well she was and she look you know you've got to get her to do a little bit of a jig when she comes up well we said we might finish the last night with a Kaylee or something we've got that in our <laughs> mind that there could be a bit of Scottish dancing at the end yeah. I'd love to see that Barbara doing that yeah so we're really looking forward to that she's 70 years old she can still do a jig she's look, looking great she's looking great and it's funny because being in the food business Celtic Sea Salt was one of the first things that, that mm. started us on the barber thing. And one of the warehouses that we deal with, they could not keep up the demand. It's worldwide. And they said, it's this barber, a new woman. And, and this is the, the warehouse is saying, mm. when she talks about it, we sell out. And the Celtic Sea Salt companies, mm. they know it's Barbara Neil as well. Mm. And the same with the organic mm. castor oil. Mm. Again, our customers can't get enough of it. These are great mm. products mm. for us. And they're really good for people. People are loving them. We do the compress packs where people mm. can put the castor oil against yes. the liver and they, they sleep overnight with it. All yeah, the things that Barbara talks about. Everything she talks about, people buy from us. And it's yeah. wonderful to see. You've seen the books going out, you know, flying yeah. out the door. We do little packages with Barbara's book mm. and then somebody might buy some castor oil. So, you know, we can see a, a little Barbara and the old yeah. package going out. It's mm. amazing. I'll tell you one thing I'm really happy I saw mm. in your store. I think you keep it over on the shelf. It's uh, this wild jam cream. Yeah, that wild jam cream is really good. Now, that's made here in the UK, is it? Amazing company called Napiers. And it's, it's yeah. interesting because we posted about it on Facebook. And it's amazing stuff. And, and mm. the backstory to this company, Napiers, is unbelievable. They, mm. they, they, <laughs> Herbalist, 190 years, Jane, or something like that, 180 years? 1850. They're amazing business. The backstory is amazing. The guy was an orphan who started it. You know, it's a, it's a real rags to, probably not even rags to riches. It's yeah. just a feel-good story. They're Fantastic. A, they're a lovely business. Well, I told Barbara about it. Yeah, good. Oh, she was very excited. Yeah, good. And oh, she excellent. said, oh, good, I need to have it. And I told her a little bit about it. She says, yeah, I support that. That's, that's what we want, because trust me, Barbara's word for a lot of people is like gospel in many ways. Mm. Barbara says it's one thing, they want that. And mm. the Anna's Wild Champion, we contacted them and they said, come back in six months, we're too busy. Yeah. I think it was new owners who'd taken over or whatever. Mm. Yeah. And I thought that would be really great to get that. And then we sourced it and we thought, do you know what? There's people selling that Anna's Wild Champion for £170 on eBay mm. and people are paying it. Mm. Selling the Napier's Wild Champion for £17. It's a bargain. 
But that's the right price. Mm. Why would someone pay ten times the price because Barbara said one thing? It's like, mm. d don't get caught up. Barbara's saying mm. wild jam cream. Yeah. She's not saying it has to be this brand or the other. So it's, it's nice to, to hear you saying that because mm. different countries are going to have mm. different options. Support your local option. Yeah. If Barbara was born in Edinburgh, she probably would be talking about... Oh, she would be. She would be. Yes, look, we don't have any brand loyalty. We want the product with the yam in it, and that's what she supports. And if it's great that you got it over here, local, at the right price. I can tell you Barbara's fully supportive, and she supports all local products around here. And when she first started mentioning it, that was what was on the market at the time. And we knew the people that started the company and it was yeah. a good product. They were passionate like us. They developed it purely for the well-being. But these products are pretty much the same. The ingredients are the same. So they hung up on the brand. But, we, well, it's the outcome, you know. I don't want someone waiting six months to get an oh, no. junk. Well, there's, well, there's no, we're moving in the same direction. And, and again, half the battle, Michael, is you believe it's going to work. Mm. Someone who is paying 170 quid for a 17 pound product, they believe it's going to work. Yeah. That's half the battle. Yes, that's true. You know, so they get it, they're sold on the concept, mm. they, they take it, it starts mm. to work, they feel good. And this is where we're at. People are enjoying the, the castor oil. They're enjoying, the, the rebounder was the same. Mm. Barbara talks about the, the Bellicom rebounder. Mm. And it is, it's the Rolls Royce, it's an amazing rebounder. But we've got one in the UK, the company's amazing. It's a Bellicom type quality, yeah. a, a, an affordable price for more people. If the customer needs parts, I can get them in the UK. Mm. Still rebounding. It doesn't need to be the Bellicom. The principle is, is the bounce action. <laughs> on, on a quality product that's, it, that, yeah, that's yeah. right for the, for oh, the location, you know, and that, that's mm. what we're doing. And it'll be the same in America and the same in mm. France and Germany and all the rest of it. Local companies who are supporting the messages that Barbara's getting out there and supporting the books and supporting mm. Barbara, they've got to deal with the local version of what Barbara's oh, doing. Oh, 100%. And we agree with that. And look, honestly, she probably when she was speaking about that, she just discovered Bellicon and we bought, we bought a number ourselves to in, put them into our health retreat. We have one that sits in the middle of our house, you know, that besides us, our grandchildren all love to bounce around on it. But really, if you've got a, a good product here, local, that's it. Yeah, we're very, very, very pleased with it. Michael, we're going to take you out for dinner now, but it's been so nice to chat. We could chat for hours here, but it's been really great to chat. Pleasure, Steve. It's been, it's been great to catch up with you, yeah. get you to meet the staff, get you to, to see our operation, you get a feel for what we're doing meet with Jane and I and you know we had a nice little lunch yesterday which was enjoyable and we're going to have tonight. a nice meal tonight all healthy and I really I love your operation here I met your workers yesterday the ones that were all working it's efficient you've got fantastic products I just think wow I only wish this was just down the road from where we lived yeah because Misty Mountain would have all these products that we'd be using them in our retreat because we're all Always looking for good products. Yeah, well, there's lots for us to chat about, and I think we're on a, a good trajectory here. So we're very Thank pleased you. with the relationship and how it's going, and it's, it's, it's been great that you've came to, to see us today. Well done, Good Food Project. Thank you.